Hey guys, it's Chris Jones for episode 48 of Ask Me Anything. Um, I am about to deliver some serious content. Um, make sure you have a notepad and that uh, you know, you're prepared for some, some fairly in-depth uh, content around a question that I got um, from Danny Likens. Danny uh, is a uh, Wilkes-Barre based business owner. He's the co-founder of Kraken Board Sports. He's a Wilkes University uh, alum and um, he and some of his friends during his uh, tenure at Wilkes incubated a business um, in the action sports space um, that basically they have a lot of pro a number of products but basically empowers um, snowboarders and skiers uh, to ski without snow and boats. Interesting. Check them out, Crack and Board Sports. But so Danny's question was uh, around raising capital, right? They're an early stage company, and my guess is in order for his company to take those next steps, this is a topic that's on his mind. And I know it's on the mind of a lot of you guys that are watching this. So um, he just said, would love to see another uh, episode of your AMA regarding funding options on early stage startups. Um, something on making the switch from bootstrapping to venture capital would be cool. So Danny, I can't just answer this at a high level in one episode. So I'm gonna dedicate an entire series of episodes to your question because I think it hits at um, one of the areas that I have a lot of experience in, and I know it's one of the areas that most entrepreneurs fail at, and many of you are, are interested in learning more about how to successfully raise venture capital. So most fundable businesses, fundable businesses don't get funded because they fail to dedicate the requisite time and allocate the necessary resources to conduct an official venture capital fundraising process. The takeaway here, guys, is process. Um, the purpose of today's AMA is to provide you with the exact process I've used to help raise tens of millions of dollars in venture capital. So process is important. In other words, the chances of you raising venture capital financing without going through the exhilarating and awfully painful multi-month process is near 0%. So if you don't put a process together and if you don't follow some of the uh, very specific actionable uh, steps and advice that I share with you, your chances of success are, are very, very low based on my experience. So first, if you're serious about raising venture capital, Clear your calendar for at least the next 90 days. I'll come back to why that matters in a few minutes, but 90 days minimum from start to finish, from outreach to coordinating wire transfers of the money into your company bank account. So second, you need to, and this is where we start, and I'm going to spend a little bit of time here. Second, refine your business model and build a pitch deck that should be no longer than 13 or so slides. I said refine your business because I want you to write that down and underline it because as I'm going through these slides, you may become perplexed that your business idea or model can't be so easily defended in front of venture capitalists. A 13 slide deck will give you the opportunity to share with them at a very high level everything you need to share with them in an initial meeting to earn a second meeting. So the goal of your pitch deck is really to earn a second meeting. And during that second meeting, there could be a, a round of uh, requests for additional information and we could go into some of those things uh, in, in, a, in a future AMAs. So I'm going to go through your slide deck. I am going to spill the beans on the exact process, the exact slides that I used 
most recently, within the last couple of weeks, to close a $1.5 million round from some of the top venture capitalists in the world. Slide one, define your mission. So you need to do it in 30 words or less. Your mission is what your business does. For instance, one of my newest businesses, Special Guest App, makes it extremely simple and easy. Special Guest App makes it extremely simple and affordable for anyone, anywhere to hire live entertainment on demand. So the more visionary and bold you can be with your mission, the better. It also should be intriguing and interesting, and it should be potentially inspiring. Um, you read it in and of itself if you're a venture capitalist and you can't wait for the following slides because you just expressed a clear mission. So think about Google's mission. Google, right, one of the biggest companies in the world, their mission is to organize the world's information. Pretty bold, um, pretty badass to say the least. But this slide, this mission slide should set up your vision for your business in 30 words or less. Slide two, jump right into your team. Why is your team the right team to execute your mission? Share your accomplishments and any unique skills that makes your team especially compelling. This is one of the reasons that building the right team before you actually go out and pitch the VCs could be a difference maker. Often I've said many a times that I invest in people, not ideas. A lot of investors, um, even if you've got a great idea, but they don't think you have a great team, they won't invest. So team is required. You know, having a great idea may or may not be. And, and, and you know, you could be the judge of that. Slide three, uh, problem statement. This is critical. And this is where I said earlier, you need to refine your business. Um, what problem does your business solve? Just to be brutally honest, if your business or your idea doesn't solve a problem, chances are people aren't gonna give you money uh, you know, to carry out that business. You need to be specific and to the point. Um, you need to use data where it can make the problem jump off the slide. Exploit data if you have it to really hit home on the fact that there is a problem and that your product or service or app will solve that problem or help to solve that problem. Slide four, you need to answer why now? Make your case for the, why the time is now for you to solve the problem you are solving with your business, right? So use trend data and market research to make your case. If you struggle on the why, you may have a problem and it may be more difficult, um, wouldn't say impossible, but more difficult to defend your pitch to investors. Slide five, this is a critical one. This, this is like team. So team, it's kind of a showstopper. You know, if you, if you can't articulate that you guys are the right ones to solve the problem, you're in trouble. If it's not an, a, a market that's big enough, chances are VCs aren't gonna be interested. So you need to educate yourself a little bit here and you need to answer the question, what is the total addressable market associated with your business, right? That's also the acronym TAM, T-A-M, is thrown around a lot in the investment space. You need to do the research here uh, don't just be aware of this, please write this down. Don't just cite market size numbers because they are good. Um, for instance, if your business is in e-commerce, it does not make sense to quote the entire size of the e-commerce market. That's silly. Uh, chances are the VCs will kind of uh, probably won't even invite you in for a meeting if, if you make that critical error. Instead, and this is, all of these slides should not have much content. They should be really thought out and to the point. But instead of using those vanity numbers, 
do the research and boil down your market size to something you can defend in front of the VC. And when I say defend, not in 10 minutes, you're gonna have a limited amount of time to deliver this pitch. Probably gonna be about 12 to 15 minutes. So about a minute to two minutes each slide. And then you're gonna have you know, maybe 15 minutes for, uh, to answer questions. If you're lucky, maybe you'll get 45 or 60 minutes, but most of your initial VC meetings are probably gonna be 30 minutes to 45 minutes. So as I mentioned earlier, this slide on market size, total addressable market, is a make it or break it for most VCs. During my, my most recent fundraise, and even looking back on the French girls, uh, $6 million, $4.5 million raise that we did in 2015, um, honestly, a lot of these bigger VCs, if they don't think you're in a total addressable market of a billion or more, meaning that you're, the value of your company could be unicorn status of a billion, um, they just won't invest. And it's more, not that you're not a good business or that other investors won't invest, but some of the top VCs won't even invest in you unless you have a total addressable market that would result in, if you own most of the market share, a good portion of it, a, million, a billion dollar valuation. That's a B, I'm not saying million. Crazy, I know, but do the research. So, uh, you know, if you can't defend that your business is large enough uh, in a large enough space to make it interesting, it will be very difficult to get funded, at least from the top tier VCs. Slide six, hope you guys are still with me. Uh, this stuff is critical if you actually want to be on the successful end of raising venture capital. Slide six, describe your product and technology. A lot of you will get this wrong. You will think in that initial pitch that most VCs care about your features. You, you're incorrect to think that they really want to, to play with your app or to, to learn about all the little nuances. That's not what the first pitch is about. Um, this is one slide, literally, that you're going to dedicate to your product. And it's only one slide. Guys, none of these slides are two slides. <laughs> You've got to get a limited amount of content on each of these. So how do you do that? How do you describe your product? Again, you only have roughly two minutes or so per slide. If needed, you could spend an extra minute or two or three on this particular one. You could give a quick demo if it's really necessary to communicate the advantage of your product or to really wow the VC with, with something cool that the product does. Beware, do not pull out a, pro, a, a product demo that won't do that. If your product isn't ready to demo, be honest. When I recently raised $1.5 million, the product, we didn't even show the product to the investors. That's a whole nother AMA, and I obviously could raise money just based on my past success. But in your case, please do not show a product that is unimpressive. Keep it high level. The purpose of this initial pitch is to get interest, remember, um, and to be completely brutally honest with, with with the prospective investor. If there is interest, you'll have plenty of time later to dive into the details of how your product or app actually works. Do not fall in the trap of spending your limited amount of time that you have, this face time with the VC, just focus on your product. It's a horrible idea. Focus more on team, focus more on market, focus more on what problem you solve, focus more on your mission or your vision for why uh, your business matters. And by the way, at this stage of the process, they don't really care. I've said that already. Slide seven is product market fit, not to be confused with product. Product market fit is do you have any traction? Um, can you demonstrate um, on one slide that you've put your product or your business in front of consumers and the consumers have responded favorably? For instance, if you're a mobile app and you've um, achieved 100,000 installs, and you have 50,000 or 50% 50 of those users using your app on a daily or weekly basis or monthly basis, that's extraordinary. You don't need millions of installs. You don't need tens of millions of installs. For that matter, you don't even need 100,000. You need to demonstrate traction, demonstrate that people actually want what you sell, what you've built. Critical, again, game stopper. In some cases, you guys are gonna be raising just on an idea like I recently did. And there are venture capital firms like First Round Capital 
where you know they they tell you don't 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 bring out the product. I want to hear your idea, and that's what they invest on. They invest on you and your idea. Now, granted, if you're a later stage company, you're going to have the traction. You're going to be able to show it. But if you don't have the traction and you need money um, over the next 18 to 24 months, and you have milestones that you're going to achieve, which I'll talk about in my next AMA with use of proceeds, um, then uh, you should be fine. Slide eight, uh, competition. In this slide, this is another one that a lot of my colleagues and, and as entrepreneurs get wrong. Um, there's nothing to hide here. This, this, assumes, this slide assumes that you've done such copious work at research that you know exactly who your competitors are. And there's always, almost always going to be one competitor that you'd like to kill. And the reason why you'd like to kill them is because you want their market share. So you want to demonstrate here that in fact competition exists and that you have some compelling um, uh, argument for why you're going to do things in a way that's going to steal market share from them and then going to capture whatever other market share hasn't been captured yet. Very critical. Um, what I have found on this slide is because it's hard, like you, 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 know, you don't want a ton of, of text on that, on that slide. So use visuals, um, you know, bubbles, find an X and Y access, like how you can compare yourself to the competition. Um, and then, you know, create bubbles with differing sizes based on how big your competition is versus how big you are. And then show it over a timeline, right? So the X and the Y access and show it over time. Uh, where uh, how you're going to grow or where you're going to be in 18 to 24 months based on this investment. Okay, slide number nine. We're almost to the end here of the pitch deck phase. Um, your go-to-market strategy. How do you intend to grow your business, right? So share at a high level the various strategies you intend to deploy to grow and scale your business. In one of my most recent pitches, I included the following. Viral storytelling, influencer campaigns, traditional feet on the ground sales, um, paid digital marketing, the whole search plus social, social plus retargeting loop that we do so well here at LSEO, uh, SEO, and public relations. It does help here if you have a senior member of your team in the room that has experience in launching and scaling businesses. If you don't have that person on your team and you want to go out and raise capital, you might want to think about bringing them on the team before you do that. A consultant can work, um, an advisor can, can work, but you know, having someone on your team with the experience could be, in most cases, they won't even ask questions on this because they'll just trust that person. Um, again, if, if you don't have that person in the room, this particular slide will come across as unrealistic and unattainable and it will be difficult for you to defend. Slide 10, your financial operating plan. Um, how will you make money? How will you make money? Just say it. I will make money through in-app purchases, $4.99 a month or $1.99 an install. Um, what are some of your financial goals or milestones? Just state them. Within 12 months, we intend to generate X in revenue. Um, you know, this slide should not go into to granular detail. That um, granularity would be saved for pro forma, which I could talk about in a future AMA should you have an interest since I love numbers and so should you. Do you guys love numbers? I've asked you to love numbers. If you don't love numbers, you need to go into the VC pitches with confidence around financial analysis and financial management. But for this particular slide, you wouldn't explain that on the slide. Um, you would just basically you know, put down at a high level how you'll make money and what are some of your goals and milestones. Ready for this little drum roll? I'm going to end this one on slide 11. Uh, now granted, this is really a 12 slide deck because you're going to have a title slide with who you guys are. So this is slide 11 if you skip that. This, my friends, is another one that people get wrong. This slide is the ask. It need not include more than one sentence. 
I am raising $1.5 million on a $4.5 million valuation. Thank you for your time. So be direct and ask for exactly how much you think you will need or how much you will need. I shouldn't say think to get to whatever milestones you expect to achieve that are compelling within the next 18 to 24 months. That's your ask. Note that the ask will be defended by your use of proceeds, which is absolutely critical to defending your ask. To some of you that might be foreign, what the heck did he just say? I have raised money, small amounts of money from non-smart investors, or I am all ready to go out on the road and I don't have a use of proceeds. Stop what you're doing. I'm gonna work with you to put together a kick-ass use of proceeds in my next AMA. So hang in there. But putting together a defendable and accurate use of proceeds is unequivocally one of the gain changing aspects of raising venture capital at the highest possible valuation. Again, more on that in the next video. So, once you have the deck or while you're creating it, you need to create a, you have to just basically do comprehensive research on venture capital firms that invest in your type of business. This is not a 30 minute exercise. This may consume several days of research where you stay up late at night and you put together an Excel sheet that takes a look at the, the largest universe that you could create of prospective venture capitalists within your particular industry or at your particular stage of your business. If you've already raised money from friends and family, you'd want to be looking at seed funds or maybe even consider Series A funds. Note that if you are serious about raising venture capital cash, you need to educate yourself on the differences between seed stage, Series A, Series B, Series C, etc. Going into VC meetings with a solid understanding of the process will make you look good and it will be helpful. It will correlate with your success. So, once you do the research, you should have no less than 30 to 50 or more VCs on your Excel sheet. That's where I usually put them. I just drop them into Excel and I try to fill out as much information on each VC as possible, including partners, email addresses, phone numbers, etc. Um, use tools like Crunchbase, PitchBook, LinkedIn, and other sources to find public lists of VCs. Um, if you're really serious um, and, and I feel like you're at the right stage, um, I also have a, a a private database of pretty much all of the, the top tier investors with all of the contact information. However, I will not share that information with someone who's not ready. So come to me when you're ready and, and I can help you with, with that process. However, I'd rather not do that because I'd rather you do the research and understand the landscape and the market and the, and the variable options. Um, so, you know, keep that in mind. So I mentioned earlier to reserve no less than 90 days. So let's just use that because that's how I always think about this and this is how I usually execute it. Day one is your start day where you're starting to outreach to the VCs. Um, day 90 is when you're actually getting the wire transfers. And in between there is a process which I'll go over really quickly. So. Over these 90 days, raising venture capital has to be, not should be, don't should all over yourself, has to be, it must be your number one priority. If it can't be your number one priority, right now is not the time to raise capital. You have no choice if you want to be successful at the end. Most entrepreneurs fail here because they think if they can secure one or two meetings that somehow they're raising capital. Um, that just doesn't work the likelihood of success is zero. You're actually not in an official venture capital process that will likely yield success. A lot of people give up after that too, which is, which is odd. They'll do two or three meetings, they'll get, a, they'll get all no's and they'll be like, oh, we're not ready to raise money. No, you just didn't enter the process properly. 
So you need to schedule in the first 30, 30 to 45 days at least 20 to 30 first meetings. A lot of people are gonna say no. When I say 20 to 30 meetings, I mean physically schedule and attend 20 to 30 meetings. You'll most likely need to travel, so make sure you have the requisite capital to book your flights and hotel rooms. Don't give me shit about not having resources to fund your process. That's a bunch of malarkey. That's crap. Watch my previous AMA on the differences between resources and being resourceful. Failure is not an option. Credit cards are. So once you have your list, you're ready to begin the outreach process. Uh, I will do a future AMA on how to crush this process, but the short answer to how to get meeting schedule is leveraging LinkedIn, VC website contact forms, and connections, first level connections to make introductions to these VCs. Again, I, I may be a first level connection of you. Please do not reach out to me and ask me for an introduction to Danny Reimer or Josh Koppelman or one of my other friends unless you are ready. Please, unless you are ready, you feel like you're going to own the process and go through it. At that point, more than happy once I review your pitch deck, uh, make sure that it follows the process um, to make that introduction for you. So, so keep this in mind. Use the pitch deck that we just went through as the basis of your outreach, right? So if you can't attach the deck, use it as a, like through LinkedIn or whatever, use it as a skeleton and ask the VC for his or her contact information so you can follow up with the deck. I'm telling you guys this from experience. I can't tell you how many hundreds of VCs that I've reached out to um, through this process. Important, this is critical. The reason why I want you guys to, to, to actually go through a process is that the time element here, the sense of urgency is critical. When you reach out to the VC, notify them that you are in a process to raise X number of dollars. Just tell them your ask directly and that you'd like to meet with them. Tell them, for instance, and just be creative here with me if you will, tell them you'll be in San Francisco, Los Angeles, etc. during the week of fill in the blank and you are scheduling meetings. So what I would do, for instance, with French girls when we raised all that money, we didn't even, we hadn't even secured the first meeting in San Francisco. And we said, for instance, for the last two weeks of March 2015, we're going to be in San Francisco. And that gave us the opportunity, um, and just go ahead and book your travel, you know, make this real. Um, that gave us the opportunity to be very specific about our availability um, to meet with VCs in that particular, uh, that particular market. And it allows you to say, I will be in there you know, next week. And the, and the, and the goal is, is that um, you want to book as many meetings in that city as possible. Like I am talking early morning to late at night. Go back to the hotel, have a drink. Early morning, late at night. Any of the guys that I've helped raise capital, you could reach out to them and ask them, about this because I have put them through this process and uh, it is intense. So um, yeah, so you need to be as resourceful and tactical during outreach as possible. Don't just fire off blanket emails. I get them all the time. They don't work. I get them as an investor. Personalize and follow up respectfully but aggressively. For instance, just a reminder that my company will be in San Francisco next Monday through Wednesday. We have some time Tuesday morning between 10 to 12 if you are available for a short meeting over coffee. Be creative. I forgot to mention, and this is critical, and I know there's probably only a few of you that are still with me, and I appreciate you for staying with me throughout this long AMA. Expect a level of rejection that you may have never experienced in your life. A successful venture capital raise is always primarily no's. Nope, not interested. And you, have a, and you have small muscles and your face is ugly. Expect it and get over it. Most VCs won't give you the time of day. 
know what you're getting into. But remember, the goal here is to come out of your process with one or more term sheets. A term sheet is a non-binding commitment to invest pending customary due diligence. We could talk about that in a future AMA, but either way, you need to do the research and understand this stuff. So if you execute over the first 30 to 45 days, you'll be set for follow-up meetings in the final 30 to 45 days of the process. You need, this is critical, this is one of my secret sauces, and it requires a lot of confidence. You need to control the process. Don't let the VCs control the process. I don't care who their names are. Um, I, I just don't. I don't care what the name of the firm or the name of the partner. You need to control the process. Of course, do it diplomatically and do it with respect, but do it aggressively. Your process must move on as creating a sense of urgency because urgency is one of the critical pieces of, of a successful raise. The VCs don't want to miss on a deal. They don't want to miss out. If they had their way, which you don't want them to have, um, they'd tell you to just about everyone to check back in once you have more traction or once you achieve a certain milestone. That's crap. You need to keep the process moving. Some desired VCs will fall out of the process, and I know that sucks. It sucks ass. Some will come back in too, but that's for another day. You don't necessarily want that to happen, but if it does, pick up your big boy or big girl underpants and keep moving like a freight train. Expect bruises. Expect lots of pain, but trust me, it's good pain once you come out of the process with a shit ton of capital. So there you go. If you don't follow this process, you will likely find it almost impossible to raise venture capital. However, if you follow my advice and you have a great business that solves a problem in a large enough market for VCs to actually give a shit, you'll likely end up with many options at the end of the process. In the next video, in, the, in my next AMA, I will cover the very important topic of the use of proceeds. I also intend to do a future video on alternatives to venture capital, since the VC process is not for every, everyone, and there are a lot of alternatives to keep your business funded without having to partner with sharks like me. So, Feel free to post any questions that you have below and I will answer every single one of them. Also, if you haven't yet, please subscribe to my YouTube feed because that is where I'm storing all of these videos and that's probably where I'm gonna move this series over to at some point in the near future. Um, what else can I say? This was a long video, I appreciate your time, but I hope you found value in this video. Um, and I'll see you guys for video 49, where I will share with you how to properly value your company, which is a huge, huge impediment for many of you uh, and a confusing point. Don't know how to do it. Uh, I'll help you with that. And I will help you put together step by step a winning use of proceeds. Guys, peace. Have a great day.